What's up, guys? Ernest Vision One here, and welcome back to another edition of the Three Way Dance Wrestling Podcast. And you can't have a three way dance unless there's three of us. And I left out that phrase last week, and nobody stopped me. But joining me, as always, is Shelby, aka Shubs, plugged in and ready to feel the lash of the back. There you go. And joining me, as always, is one thing makes him forget red, red wine, Nick. Red, red wine What's up, everybody? There we go All right, we got a show for you here tonight We're going to talk about WWE's recent offering A backlash from San Juan, Puerto Rico I don't know why I keep doing that I feel like that's necessary Um, (laughs) Plus, we're going to play the games you know and love It came from eBay, the three-word dance Plus, we're going to bring back an old favorite Back and forth here tonight Plus, the vintage pick of the week up Nick's ass. We're gonna go up Nick's ass. Search around for what's oh, up. Oh fuck there. yeah! Yeah. No back to the week. This <laughs> day, uh, Thursday in history since Shelby's two. Nope. Months. Nope. Huh? Nope. It's May twelfth now. Which oh, you got it. I did. I only did you one this week. Though. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, hey. Uh, see, I was about to clown you, and there you go. You actually did your fucking job this week. There you go. Wow. <clears throat> Shelby actually did work this week. Holy I did. <sighs> But don't expect that every week, because he said before, once this shit starts feeling like work, he's out of here. Yeah. Yeah. And, of course, before we get to all that, we got to get to some news, and there is not a lot of it. Um, Like, this is how fucking, uh, how much news there isn't. And let's start with Impact. Uh, We don't really talk a lot about Impact, but are you guys familiar with, uh, you know, it was a big craze for a little bit. Like, I want to say, I don't know, maybe a year, maybe two years ago. But NFTs, are y'all familiar with those? A little bit. <laughs> Impact is getting into the NFT game. They're a little late, aren't they? Yeah, a little bit. But here's the kicker to it. Here, here's what got me. This is what made me write it down. And that is they're releasing two NFTs limited to 100 each. Of The first one being Mickey James, which, all right, Mickey James. You know, she's an attractive lady. I can understand Making an NFT of that, you sure. know, any and just uh, probably Nick knows because I heard him sigh when I brought this up. So, Shubs, if you had to think of the uh, the in the NXT the Impact roster that you know of <laughs> right now, who would you think the other uh, NFT released would be right now? Oh God, uh, the current roster. The I'm gonna say Santino. That's exactly who it is, Santino. Holy shit. What the fuck? I didn't read that article because I'm like, why in the fuck are they getting into NFTs now? Nobody gives a fuck about NFTs, let alone can afford them. But I'm just like, of all the fucking people. Mickey James and Santino Morello. Mickey, I can understand. She's an attractive lady. I get it. Somewhat I can understand. Well, and she's been there on and off for like 10 years, right? But Santino Morello, who the fuck is going to line up for a Santino Morello NFT? And again, nothing against Santino. I have nothing to be you fair, know, they're not going to line up for a Mickey James one either. Probably not. For being still, honest, I can see why they would want a Mickey James. What a know? dumbass move, though, by Impact. Let's get into NFTs. Nobody fucking uh, fuck. <laughs> they're they're trying anything at this point. They're just throwing shit at the wall and seeing if it sticks. Apparently, they have enough money to go to a different fucking country. Did you hear about that? Is that on the news cycle? Australia. No, yeah, they're supposed to be going to Australia in November, I think, or something. Or what? Uh, well, apparently New Japan was supposed to be having a show there, and they canceled. So I think they're kind of like ca- um, capitalizing on that, the fact that they canceled. So they're going to do a show New in Australia. Japan, like, can we have the lease for the building for free, please? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, I bet that made uh, New Japan unhappy. Hey, speaking of unhappy... <sighs> A couple WWE superstars unhappy with their creative at the moment. We'll start with the softball one and hit the hardball here later. Uh, But Gigi Dolan uh, posted on Instagram Tuesday night or Wednesday morning, one of those two, that she misses being PK. PK, of course, standing for Priscilla Kelly, her previous persona before joining WWE or her real name, obviously. which I can I can wrap my head around because this is somebody at one time who was once part of the most dominant factions 
next to the Undisputed Era in, w- in NXT with uh, JC Jane, Mandy Rose. And now she's being jobbed out in the first round of the Women's Championship Tournament. So, thoughts on... Did I miss Gigi if she left? I honestly could give a fuck. All I right, haven't watched on. NXT for I don't know how long now. Like, actually watched, like, all of it. There's some of it I'll watch, admittedly. But none of this fucking other horse shit. I still don't understand why they had to fire Mandy Rose. But, like, I just... Ooh. <sighs> I feel like she's unhappy because they were just kind of hot shot at the split of fucking her and JC Jane. Didn't even try to fucking repair the fucking group once Mandy Rose was gone. And then shit all over her, even though she is probably the better talent than J.C. Jane at this point. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I don't blame her for wanting to leave if that's the case. Like, fuck. I couldn't fucking pick her out of a lineup. I think you could. Maybe. Yeah, you could. (laughs) She's the only redhead in NXT. Oh, it's her. Okay. I mean, I think I've seen like two matches with her, maybe. I think there was a match at one of the NXTs we did that she was in, the last one. Yeah. That That's about it. Like, I don't watch NXT anymore either. I think around the time that, like, the pandemic happened, that's kind of when I stopped paying any kind of attention to it. And just never... I don't know really- people still use that term, when the pandemic happened. Like, like, like it's really fucking over. Well, well, actually, it was declared over the other day yeah, by a World yeah, Health well, Organization. They said it's no longer a fucking global right. threat. Yeah, which I was like, I mean, I, don't I was know like, well, I, I, you know, shit. All right, cool. Canada hasn't really been a threat for like two years now. Year and a half. Or at least a year and a half. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah. So. Um. Da, 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 da. And the other person unhappy with their position. Uh, we haven't seen him on TV. I think since what WrestleMania, I believe, or maybe then, uh, the SmackDown after WrestleMania. Um, Drew McIntyre. He he's pissed. Yeah, apparently. What the hell is he pissed um, about? Apparently unhappy with his uh, creative. And then on top of all that, they're like, hey, we'll move you to Raw. And he was pissed that he was not told about that because apparently he likes to be very hands-on with his creative. And uh, when they moved him to Raw, nobody told him. He found out when they're like, Drew McIntyre to Raw. And he's like, huh? Um. There's been planned yeah. heel turns for him. Uh, all this you stuff. You might as well. And all this stuff. And up. he is unhappy. So if he were to, and there's even th- his contract's up soon. He has not signed a new one. So if not he were to leave. until next February. If he were to leave, what do you guys think? All right. AW moving on. Because like, <laughs> no. it was no, like a long silence. I, I, well, okay. You're both thinking. Yeah, no, exactly. I, I had to think. I have to think because, I mean, for for one thing, well, yeah, for one thing, he didn't get his moment in front of fans as he deserved. Yeah. Because the pandemic, like, kind of kicked into full gear. Like, COVID was just like, "Fuck your live WrestleMania, bitch." <laughs> and so he he won in front of no crowd, and then even when. Even when it was the Thunderdome, I mean, Thunderdome wasn't really a fucking live crowd. Yeah. Here's just some video screens that you're fucking zoomed into or whatever the fuck they used to fucking pull that off. Um, I, On one hand, I can't help but think, you know what, he, he deserves to have that moment. But on the other, I'm like, well, but he's not. He's not being used to that potential anymore. And he's kind of lost in the shuffle right now. He became just understand. another guy on that roster. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Lost in the shuffle. Just another guy. So as just another guy, I can understand where he'd be unhappy. And unhappy with less money. But when you're that spot on the card, what do you expect? I, I don't know. It's kind of... It's kind of a double-edged sword to me, and I know he still carries <laughs> around his stupid fucking sword, but, <laughs> yeah, yeah. but I, I, uh, I don't know. It's one of those things. But, do you, but here's the question, though. Do you leave, or do you just say, fuck it, 
and take the Dolph Ziggler money. Um, he's going like, to the be the same. They're not going to use. He's going to be in the same position in AEW if he were to leave maybe and go to AEW. Maybe even worse. Exactly. Yeah. If he were to go to Impact, sure, he would shine, but that's because who else have they really got? Steve yeah. Backlund. Oh, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Japan, it feels just kind of like, I don't know. I mean, maybe it's just me, but New Japan kind of feels like an afterthought right now because it kind of feels like the place where you go to rehabilitate your career from the U.S. and come back and tear it up. Or like, here's the Bullet Club. We're gonna have a new, yeah. leader, a whole new roster of it. Or I can like, see it's just him the same in like New Japan. He he doesn't. I don't know. There's something about him. I just couldn't see it working. Yeah, see like it with some other guys. Yeah, I just I don't know where else he fits. But then to stay, like, it's just like why stay in a job if you're unhappy? If you have options. But at the same time, if those options are shit, then what do you do? Well, look so at Dolph like, Ziggler. He's unhappy with his shit, but he's like, fine, I'll just collect the checks. Well, I mean, but yeah, he has shit on the side, though. Is. He has side stuff, though. He does his comedy stuff and whatever else. And Fair enough. Yeah, I don't know. I think if if you want to do anything with him, send him away for six months. Bring him back and make it mean something and start from scratch. Probably turn him heel. I don't well. know how much you can make it mean, though, at this point. It depends what he does and who he interacts with. If he's interacting with main event level talent, well, then he should be a main event level star, especially if he's destroying those that talent. I mean, if we're fair right now, the only main event level talent that WWE defines is fucking Roman Reigns and Cody Rhodes. Yeah, and Brock Lesnar. I guess. Yeah, and Brock Lesnar, I guess. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it's just like, well, what the fuck? Like, you can have your whole other fucking new title belt and whatever else. And I'll get to more of that. <laughs> but when you only have three people that are worthy of holding even the top title belt, how the fuck are we supposed to get past? Like, how are we supposed to believe that a new world heavyweight title is going to make any sort? Sort of impact, regardless of who it's on. Well, yeah. Well, okay. Uh, switching over to the AEW side of things. Um, yeah, let's start here, and then I'll go down there. Um, Tony Khan announced on Dynamite um, that next Wednesday. <laughs> On TNT, yes, Wednesday on TNT, that there will be a big announcement. You know, Tony and his big announcement. <laughs> yeah. We're making a new announcement. show. <laughs> yes, that is, that is uh, pretty much. But there's also a um, rumor, rumor in your window would have it, that there's also possibly going to be a streaming deal with um, the upcoming Max. Uh, you know, formerly HBO Max, now Max, on May 23rd. Um, and that show for Saturday, and I guess I can tie both of these together. Um, and, of course, that show is going to feature the return of CM Punk in Chicago, because apparently that's the only fucking city Punk can return in. <laughs> well, and, heaven forbid he return in, like, you know, fucking, you know, Boise, Idaho or something. Or Milwaukee. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but uh, also, uh, that leaves the future of Rampage up in the air. And this is the verbiage I, I read. Rampage is set to become the WWE Heat type of show. Isn't that basically what it is <laughs> now? And well, has been for like a year? <laughs> well, I mean... There's some big matches yeah. on there sometimes. I guess. Well, there were some good matches on Heat sometimes, though, too. Yeah. Yeah, once every year. Well, I don't know. Velocity other than, other has some good ha- matches other than too. Half time, other than halftime heat, name another good heat match right now. Maybe I'm confused with Velocity because Velocity had some good matches on there. Any of the Kurt Angle, Bob Holly classics, or like fucking 
I can't and, think of uh, the others. With Punk uh, returning, I'm not even going to say possibly because I think at this point it's a foregone conclusion. Yeah. Uh, with Punk returning to Collision, there is talk of two feuds happening. One being with Chris Jericho, uh, mm. that being the meeting that they had. And the other one, they are talking about reigniting an old ROH feud, that being with Samoa Joe. Huh. Uh, thoughts? Um, <laughs> the Jericho thing, I just kind of wish Chris Jericho would go away. Yeah. yeah. I've gotten real fucking sick of him at this point. He's just kind of a fucking... He's kind of like that fucking... Uh, that pimple that just keeps coming back. <laughs> No matter how many times you try and pop it. No matter it. how many times you try and pop it, it just keeps coming back. And it's like, holy <laughs> fuck, man, leave it alone. I kind of wish he'd kiss a gun and kill himself. Not that far. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But I mean, maybe like devote like more than fucking three months to your band or something like that, or stay away for a couple years and just kind of reevaluate your shit because holy fuck, dude. Yeah, uh, but on the other hand, CM Punk and Samoa Joe, I can't. I mean, it's not the most. It just kind of molds ROH into AEW again by doing it that way, and it kind of pisses me off because y y you could have more ROH centered programming, but instead it's like let's feature this shit on Dynamite. Like fuck off. Well, uh, they could. Uh, make this new show like the ring of honor show and put like but they're not doing guys. that though yeah yeah, yeah. well apparently I, I read about that apparently ring of honor is nowhere under the warner brothers discovery umbrella so that's why uh, that's what i'm saying yeah so then if cm punk is going to feud with samoa joe then samoa joe's coming back over to AEW or whatever the fuck they do with the roh tv title which they should have gave it to Mark Briscoe at the last ROH fucking show, but they fucked that up. Not surprised. Yeah. yeah. Not surprised yeah. one bit. But no. I just I fucking I I I don't know. I I can't. It yeah. could be good, but with who's booking, I don't have faith in it whatsoever. Jericho and Punk could be good, but I'm in the same boat. I'm a little sick of Jericho, and I'd like to see him just go away for a little while or something and then come back with something new. It's just the same old shit with him for the past, like, year and a half. It's always the same. And uh, Punk and Joe would be cool because, I mean, I wasn't watching Ring of Honor then, so I've never really seen Punk and Joe. Um, so, I mean, I, and I think a lot of their audience probably hasn't seen Punk and Joe either. Uh, because I think a lot of them probably were watching during the Adam Cole Ring of Honor days and shit like that, right? So yeah. um, I think it'd be a fresh thing for for AEW, but I think there is still the underlying, like, the Elite versus Punk and whoever is still, like, interesting if it ever happens, which I don't think it will. And if it was going to happen, I think the, the place and the time to do it is probably the Wembley Stadium show that they're doing which is probably going to end up being fucking the elite versus the goddamn Blackpool combat club. But I don't know. I'm interested to see what happens when they bring back punk. I do think uh, him and MJF need to have one more match too. When they bring back punk, the first press conference after a pay-per-view is going to be like, I'm old, I'm tired, I'm hurt. And I work with fucking children. Yes, Tony, I'm doing this again. Fuck. <laughs> Tony's just going to tell the elite to leave the fucking building before Punk goes on. <laughs> Erica, okay, it was just like, okay, like, guys, like, he's just, while the camera's are on, he's just like, uh, Kenny, uh, Matt, Nick, uh, Chris, you got to leave. <laughs> yeah, no, he's, he's, he's going to freak out again. Just but, leave. like, the fact that we're still talking about that being an issue is an indictment on, on Tony Khan himself. He should have fucking had this figured <laughs> out a long sucks. fucking time ago. But when like you scribble your fucking notes on a notebook during a Jacksonville Jaguars game, what the fuck do you expect? Like, you remember, when, mark uh, funny. remember when Charlotte and Becky had that thing in the back that people were talking about after that promo where they fucking oh, exchanged the title belts? Swap where Charlotte yeah. just kind of threw it at her. And How was like, long were you, people bitch? talking about that? A couple months. Maybe. Maybe. Not even, I don't think. I think it was only a couple weeks. Because they're professional and they know how to take care of shit like that. Tony's just ignoring them and ignoring the problem. 
But anyways, that's a little rant on that. Because he doesn't know how to fucking do this shit. Even though it's fucking four years into this fucking company, he doesn't fucking know what he's fucking I doing. I think he's too nice of a guy. And that's not that he he's too want nice to of a guy. If he shit. was too nice of a guy, he wouldn't be fucking railing lines every fucking time you turn around. Well, the guy is a fucking. Too. No, but I Wait, don't think really it's that. He's co. He's a cokehead. Oh. So I mean, when you think about it, like he's always fucking hopped up, and then everybody's like, oh, "I want to do this, and I want to do this, and I want to do this," and it's like, okay, how many fucking jobbers slash stars of fucking 10, 15 years ago in TNA or elsewhere can I bring in to be jobbers to these guys, like? And waste as much money as I possibly fucking can. I just, I don't, fuck. I'm amazed that they're giving him another show to begin with, to be honest with you. I can't believe that. Because, like, Dynamite's still doing w- okay. Warner Brothers Discovery signed AEW to an exclusive rights deal that is worth $1 billion over yeah. five years. Yeah. Are you fucking kidding me? Like, Dynamite's There's doing no okay. Way- Okay, but, the but Rampage, Rampage is doing shit. It is doing fucking terrible. I don't terrible. know all access, but I'm sure it's terrible. And it's like you gave him a one billion dollar deal over five years. You're like, what? <laughs> yeah, I, I, hear, I hear, I hear good reviews about all access, though. So. Regardless if they're good reviews or not. If those fucking good reviews don't amount to fucking high viewership titles, how can any executive of any fucking company be like one billion over fucking five years? That is two hundred and fifty. No wait, two fifty. That's just under like fucking two hundred million dollars a year. There you go. That is two hundred million dollars a year. If it's one billion for five years, yeah, you're right. Okay, my math isn't good. Never has been. But all I'm saying is, there's no way I could justify two million dollars a year for those rights when the ratings are as they are and not consistent every week and not proven to be a commodity. Fair enough. <clears throat> All right, that was the news for this week, believe it or not. Um, so now we're going to move on to our games we like to play here. It came from eBay in the three-word dance. And like always, we start with it came from eBay, which is where I give these two th- uh, three sets of three wrestling-related items that I find on eBay. And they see if they can figure out which one is the most expensive of the three. So your first three are... This is a 1991 WWF sealed curtain set. (laughs) Sorry. Uh, Featuring Hulk Hogan, The Ultimate Warrior, Macho Man Randy Savage, and The Big Boss Man. Or is it the WWE Championship Pet Bowls? This is a dog bowl for your, or, or cat bowl, whatever, or pig, whatever kind of. Whatever kind of inside animal you have. <laughs> um, Anything can be an inside animal if you really put your yeah, heart you into a, it. You, yeah, if you have a pet mountain lion, hey, there you go. You can have a great um, big grizzly bear that's just like a great big teddy. I yeah. don't think you could, actually. Hey, if you put your mind to it. You I don't know. Not, not with that attitude. Why? why, why, that why let's or just have Canadian, somebody test for, for, for our Canadian oh. listeners, For our Canadian listeners, a pet moose. Yep. Oh God, that wouldn't even fit in the house. <laughs> you could have a pen in the yard. He just like, like a, just like, like hangs like out in the garage. Barn. We could have like a horse barn, only it's for like a steeple or a stable or whatever they fucking steeple. call. It. <laughs> and and, and you could for, put, the whole, for the moose. And you could put this WWE Championship pet bowl in there, which features the WWE Championship belt logo uh, on the bowl. Or is it? The uh, let's go with is it the set of 12? That's right, 12 brand spanking new 1999 Diamond Dallas Page keychains. These are, of course, what I just said, but they are brand new on the like the little cardboard thing. You would pick them all, like if you see them, like on a shelf somewhere, you're like, oh, a DDP keychain. You pick it up off the little cardboard thing and you take it up to the register. So, which one of these three are going for the most expensive price on eBay? 
What was the first one again? WWF Sealed 1991 curtain set with Hulk Hogan, Warrior, Boss Man, and Macho Man. The pet food bowl. There you go with the keychains. No points. Damn. That curtain set is actually going for the price of $475. For a curtain set? Yes. What the fuck? Indeed. 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 Your next three are, is it the WWF WrestleMania 2000 tabletop pinball game? This is not new in the package. It has been used, but it features the WrestleMania 2000, you know, um, Triple H, Big Show, Rock, those people. Um, Or is it the 1990s Hog Wild Sturgis Motorcycle Riding Patch. This was a, well, what what I said, you know, not really much else I can Did add to that. Riding Patch? Riding Patch. So, like, you know, motorcycles, they put their patch on their... Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there yeah, you yeah, go. Yeah. Or is it the... Da-da-da-da, the WCW Kentucky... Lotto scratch ticket used, not a winner, that features Booker T. Which one of these three are going for the most expensive price on eBay? So hold on, the first one was? The first one was the WWF WrestleMania 2000 tabletop pinball game. And then it was the Booker T lotto card in the third. What was the second one again? God damn it, Nick. (laughs) (laughs) 1990s Hogwild Sturgis. Riding patch. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. The Sturgis Riding Patch. Didn't we do the Kentucky logo one before? Probably. But fuck Otto, sorry. Whoa, yeah. Jesus. <laughs> oh, it's, been, it's not it's the spirit one, of the it's game. Been one, it's been one of the three before. Yeah, I thought so. I was like, that sounds familiar. Um, but, but, but I'm going to go with the lotto ticket. Points. Nick. Yeah. yeah. Because that patch is actually going for the price of $199.99. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's it's... right. Uh-huh. Adam Gable. That's right. Your last three here. Let's go with. All right. Is it the 1991 WWF World Title Belt Fanny, fanny Pack? Oh, excuse me. It is a fanny pack. That is, you know, looks like the WWF world title at the time, but it is also sealed. Oh, yes. Or is it the TNA Best of Hulk Hogan DVD set also sealed? Or is it the Impact Wrestling Georgia lottery ticket featuring Jeff Hardy never scratched? Which one of these three are going for the most expensive price on eBay? What was the first one again? God damn it! <laughs> 1991 WWF World Title Belt Fanny Pack sealed in the package. Okay. So, uh, I know what the DVD set. The fanny pack. Points. Shelby. Fuck. Because believe it or not, a TNA best of Hulk Hogan. I I didn't think he had that much to have best of in TNA. Mm. TNA best of Hulk Hogan sealed DVD set is going for the price of $150. Fuck off. (laughs) There is not that much in there that's worth it that you can't find on YouTube. I'll bet you get that on Amazon for like 20 bucks. Uh, not yeah, maybe not. Not even signed by Tully Blanchard or anything. Not even signed by Tully Blanchard. Not even while. signed by Brooke Hogan. <laughs> that, that item pisses me off for some reason. That fucking Hulk Hogan t-shirt signed by her it fucking bugs me. Wow, this DVD <laughs> doesn't even come up on Amazon. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> That's how not wanted it well, is. Well, you're on Amazon CA. Yeah. Look Does that really Amazon. make that much of a difference? It could. I mean, you get shit not, from China no, on Amazon. Not usually anymore. It's usually the same shit. Oh, Impact Wrestling presents the best of Hulk Hogan. Son of a bitch. It's not available, though, so there is no price. Oh, see? Yeah. All right, now we're going to move on to the three-word dance, which is a game that's supposed to be three words that relate to a wrestler. <laughs> uh, but it's kind of drifted away from that. As time kind on. of. Kind of. <laughs> well, mine still kind of relate to them. No, they don't. And... Yeah, they do. Yeah. Shut up. Uh, so your first three words are. Um, all right, fine. I'll give you. Uh, you know what? I have bullshit ones right now, but I'll give you a real one just because you said that. Your three words are justice, spray, model. Rick Martel. No. Mace. Damn it. Nah. Justice, his tag team move with T-Bar was the high justice. Spray, you spray mace. And model, you know, maximum male models. Masse. Fair enough. Masse. All right. My first three. Ruthless, reckless, pompous. Macho Man? Nope. Rick Steiner? Nope. Don Sane? Nope. This reckless pompous. That's gotta be a Jay Lethal? Nope. It's gotta be a synonym. Is that what it's gotta be? Well, Um, ruthless, reckless. <laughs> Don Callis? Nope. Ruthless, reckless, pompous. What the fuck? Rick Flair? <laughs> nope. Peter Avalon? Nope. Oh, that was a good guess, though. Don Cena. You already said that. No. Kurt Angle. No. Hint. Talk show. Oh, fuck. Grayson Waller. No. Rowdy Piper. Yes, Rowdy Rowdy Piper. Oh, son you, of a bitch. You, do, you do realize that Reckless starts with a W, right? Starts with an R. No, Look it, it up. No, it starts yes, with it does. W. I looked it up. It's Reckless. R E C K L E S S. No, you're wrong. No, I'm right. I'll fucking show you. Dictionary says so. Dictionary's wrong. You're wrong. Fuck, as if it was RRP. Fuck you. <laughs> <sighs> you son of a bitch. I fucking... Uh. All right, so the next three words. Blue. Gray. Cloudy. Uh, my brain's like, don't say it, don't say it, don't say it, don't say it, but I'm going to say it anyway. Blue Meanie? No. Yeah, I didn't think so. Sonny? Huh? No. Tom Pritchard? No. Huh. No, that wouldn't make sense. Sammy Zayn? Nope. Kevin Owens? Nope. Right, right, right. Blue, gray, cloudy. Hint. Um. Damage. Yo, Sky? 
blue, gray, cloudy sky. Damage control, EO uh, sky. All right. Uh, your next one here. <laughs> uh, I'm going to save that for last. <laughs> okay. Three words are Mustang, Bronco, Ranger. Montez Ford. God damn it! <laughs> That's a good one. I like that. Fuck! That was the one I was writing down before we started recording when I was like, hey, let me write this down real quick. All right. Fuck! <laughs> <laughs> My next three. Disguise. Monster. Sleeper. DMS. DMS. Slide into the DMs. Jordan Grace. No. Oh. Disguise monster and what? Sleeper. Harley Race? No. Disguise monster sleeper. Ron Strowman? Nope. Oh, fuck. oh. Is it Harley Race? No. Yeah. Orville Brown. No. <laughs> and WrestleMania trip. WrestleMania what? Trip. Mick Foley. Nope. Trip. The Big Show. Nope. Chris Jericho. Nope. Wex Luger. Nope. Hulk Hogan. Nope. <sighs> Yokozuna? Nope. Ultimate Warrior. Nope. Sergeant Slaughter. Nope. Cody Rhodes. Nope. Fuck, I have no idea. Yeah, I don't, I, shit, I got nothing. Oh, you wait, wait, nothing? wait, wait. No, 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 wait. Okay, I got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I had Ult- something, but then it went out. <laughs> Ultimo Dragon. What? Uh, disguise being a synonym for mask. Monster. Uh, Dragon's a monster. Sleeper. The Dragon Sleeper. Okay. And WrestleMania good. Trip. WrestleMania 20. He tripped twice going to the ring. Oh, WrestleMania <sighs> Trip. Oh, okay. That was, that yeah. Was, all right. I'll give you that one. All right. So the next three words. Nose. Planet Security. Sean Stasiak? No. Jamie Noble? No. Joey Mercury? Joey Mercury, the broken nose of Armageddon 2005. The fucking Planet Mercury, J&J Security, Joey Mercury. Didn't think it would be that easy. Your last one here, line, travel, moon. Lawrence Taylor. No. What? I don't know. Line, travel, moon. Conan. No. Uh, she... Line, travel, moon. I was really proud of myself with this one. Um, Cameron Grimes. Fuck. <laughs> Line, travel, moon, straight to the moon. Fuck. Yes. 
A line is the quickest. Uh, the uh, what is it? The uh, what is that phrase? The fucking quickest distance between two places is a straight line, line. traveled to the straight yeah. to the moon. Fuck. Yeah. And I'll go it too, man. I was proud of myself with that one though. All right, my next, my last three: invasion, freak, colossus. Scott Steiner. Nope. Zeus. Nope. Festus. Nope. Ryback. Nope. Nick Camarado? Nope. Sid. Nope. Hey, Stacks Calhoun. Nope. Invasion. What was, what was the middle word? Freak. Freak. Colossus. IFC. Invasion. Freak. Colossus. Kane. Nope. Rob Terry. T- Rob Terry's correct. Son of a bitch. British Invasion. He was also known as the Freak Rick. and the Welsh Colossus. There we go. Yeah, good one. All right. All right. Last three words. Angry. Beagle. Leg. Mad Dog Vachon? Fuck! Oh, damn. Son of a bitch! <laughs> Angry Beagle, Mad Dog, and then his fucking prosthetic leg. For fuck's sakes. What can I say? When I'm good, I'm good. I thought I was being clever with that one. Hey, I'll, I damn. So was I with Line Travel Moon. I was sitting here like I was going down the roster, and I was just like, "All right, what can I come up with here?" And I got to Cameron Grimes. I was like, "Anything I write down, they're just gonna see right through it." And I was like, "Wait, Line Travel? What can I say for Moon? I, everything I had for Moon, I was like, it's two words like Big Rock, you know, mm-hmm. stuff like this." And I was just like, "You know what? Fuck it, just put Moon. Let's see if I can get there." Yeah. You know? yeah. All right, so that was our games we like to play here, our main games, I should say. Three-word dance, and it came from EVA. Now we move on to another segment we have here, and that is, you know, Nick is usually pissed off about something. He's become very bitter. Very uh, bitter. When, yeah, doing this podcast. So we always like to find out something here, and that is, Nick? What's up, your ass? Last week, it was because there were free agents as part of the draft, throwing out draft rules. Now... The fucking SmackDown roster is part of the World Heavyweight Championship tournament. Not only that, Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn can appear on both shows. And I just, I'm like, why the fuck did we even do a draft then? Because they're the undisputed tag team champions. They're the Raw. I and don't give a fuck what they are. They but can vacate the SmackDown another, titles. If they're, if they're making another world champion, then why aren't they making another set of tag team champions? Why aren't they fucking trying to split the women's champions at this point? Like, I just, they botched this entire fucking draft. Because the women's champions are already split. The women's champions are already <laughs> split. Well, they are. Fucking He's not yeah, wrong. Have the <laughs> Raw champion on the SmackDown. He like a frog. You have the Raw champion on SmackDown. You have the SmackDown champion on Raw. You can't do a swap because it fucking ruins Bianca's fucking reign. I it mean, makes... does it, though? It's the same. Yes, champion. it does. No, it's not the yeah, same. Yeah, it is. No, here's it's not the same. This is why you need to make it the WWE <laughs> Women's Championship <laughs> and the WWE you're the World Women's Championship. You tell me to shut up. It's my segment, bitch. I know, but I'm telling you how to fix it. I'm telling you, instead, have instead, fix, of, a, you instead can of a respond. belt swap, instead of a belt Fuck. swap, which would cancel out like the her women's reign. World Heavyweight Championship, the WWE Women's Championship. You rename no, 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 no. no, no. You, instead of doing that, you just rename the titles. I just said that. Fuck you. <laughs> I mean, right now it's basically the same fucking belt this is it's giving just me metaphorical color. hemorrhoids <laughs> it's just a different color one's red and one's blue 
Make one white and one fucking black. There you fucking go. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Those are still two different colors. <laughs> They're shades. Not colors. They're well, shades. I guess. Still. Ha. This segment is now canceled. <laughs> You know that I, I would almost be fine by that because it just gets me riled up for no fucking reason. <laughs> Give me them metaphorical hemorrhoids. You were saying rename it the women's, the WWF women or WWE women's champion. I'm saying Bianca has the Raw championship on SmackDown. Just rename yes. that the SmackDown one now. No, but that's the title swap. I mean, that's basically what they're doing, anyways. That's I know the they physically swap. swap the title. But it's but really. That's all they do. They I know, swap. But Don't again, do that. You make no the SmackDown but I'm one saying, the WWE but I'm saying, okay. Women's Championship. I, you I make the Raw one the Women's World Championship, and you'd be done. No, no, I don't think you're getting what I'm saying. No, if I am getting swap, what you're no, saying. If they I swap the t- a dick. If they swap the titles, okay, then Bianca becomes a SmackDown title, and her reign as Raw champion is over. Okay. No, but, but that's but that's not. God damn it! Shut up! If they fucking just change the name right now of the Raw Women's title to the SmackDown title, her reign continues. But you don't understand because that would mean a physical fucking belt swap. No. Rhea can't carry the blue one on Raw. Well, they fucking beyond that. This, this... It on the fucking. This is the exact problem they've put themselves into. No matter what they do, it's not going to make any fucking sense. You change one to the WWE Women's Championship, one to the Women's World Championship to correspond with the brand's champions, and be done. But does Raw even, like, is, is, I mean, they put SmackDown guys in the world title tournament, so is Raw even... That's what's up my ass. (laughs) Why the fuck did we even do a draft? Or why didn't we wait? Oh, I fucking hate this shit. <laughs> Seth Rollins, if Seth Rollins doesn't end up the fucking world heavyweight champion at the end of this, it was all for a fucking waste of fucking time. Who really cares anymore? They fucked Obviously up. We Obviously, we we're we talking about it. <laughs> exactly, and we've been going on for a bit about the same they thing. Just, they fucked everything up from WrestleMania. It just nothing has made they sense. They fucked everything up before WrestleMania. Come on now. No, they were they were going in the right direction. And here's Vince with his Diego mustache and his greasy hair, being like, "Oh, that's not good shit, pal." I love how like he's always been a villain for like fucking decades now, but now he yeah. actually looks like a villain from like a 1940s fucking. He looks black like and white the toilet film. paper I used to wipe my ass this morning. After I was done wiping my ass. Why are you looking at your shitty toilet paper? You gotta Just check make sure it's blood. clear. You gotta make sure it's clear. Yeah, you gotta make sure there's no blood in that shit. If there's blood in there, you might have hemorrhoids or else a more serious problem. You should probably go to a doctor. Tear your butthole. Yeah. Oops. Join us next week on our new podcast, Head <laughs> Talk. Hey, you started talking about what's up my ass. It's what's up my ass. That's There's some shit up there, too. Blood. Lots and lots of blood. Stop. <laughs> or Eric Bischoff almost died because he was passing too much. Hold blood. on. I got to write He's that down. So Eric Bischoff is hypoglycemic. And he was saying about it in his podcast that he got fucking... He went for shit the one day and he started passing too much blood and like I guess he like almost passed out or passed out or whatever and <laughs> on the toilet. Hospital. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, he was like, all fucked up and he like, had to go to the hospital and like get checked out and they're like, You almost died because like you're passing too much blood. It's like I'm hypoglycemic. They're like, When's the last time you ate? He's like fucking yesterday or some shit. There's like a cause when you're hypoglycemic, you have to keep eating. Because your fucking yeah. system can't process unless you're fucking like have like a snack or like something like that, and your snack sap normally would be healthy or else. Like I had a classmate that fucking she was hypo glycemic. She'd be like, I need some fucking cheeseburgers, and we're all like, fuck, man. Like, how did my eat ass is gonna bleed? Your ass is gonna bleed. I don't know. That's it. That's the one. <laughs> I don't fucking know. <laughs> I was writing down, you know, I always put a quote from one of us in the title <laughs> card and shit. 
and I wrote down blood, lots and lots of blood. Then I wrote down, there's shit up there too, but, or my ass is going to bleed. That's going to be the one. (laughs) I have to eat cheeseburgers or my ass is going to bleed. No, just my ass is going to bleed. Leave the context up to them. (laughs) All right. So that was what's up, Nick's ass. Blood, world heavyweight titles, shit, you know, all this stuff. Yeah. Um, Normally, I would give a great shout out to the great people over at moviesrusa.net. But you know what? They wronged me. No, I'm kidding. Um, No, but they have a new website. What happened? No, no, no. They have a new website under construction right now. So the previous website, moviesrusa.net, is down. So when we get that new website up and going, we, like I'm a part of that fucking process or some shit. (laughs) But when they get that new website up and going, we will tell you all about it and give you that checkout code, all that good stuff like that. But just know that the Movies Are USA people are great sponsors of the three-way dance wrestling podcast. And we can continue to promote them here. All right, so with that being said, we will move on to Backlash 2023 from San Juan, Puerto Rico. Uh, you know what? First thing off the bat, like, can we can we can we start getting like different commentators for the show? No, because apparently this is the way they're going to do it from now on. Fuck, it's just going to be Michael Cole and, and fucking. Not that I don't mess. like them. It's just a, like, you know, SmackDown. We have Cole and Barrett. Raw, we have yeah. KP Z and Graves. NXT, we have Joseph and Booker T. But like, every you have to call him KP Z. Seriously, KP Z. You know? um, but like for the pay per view, or at least like do like they used to do. Like you know, like okay for the Raw match, it's you know the Raw team for the SmackDown match, it's the SmackDown team. Like, it costs them more money that way. But fuck, it's two extra people. They're probably there anyway. You know, probably. the budget cuts. No oh, fuck. Anyway. Oh yeah. So we all know about budget cuts when it comes to WWE. Um. So with that being said, um, crowd on fire, and I'll talk. More about the, I'll talk more about the crowd later, but we'll get into the first matchup here. That being for the Raw Women's Championship, Bianca Belair taking on Io Sky, and the first thing I wrote down here. You know, they were doing the ring introductions and Bianca took off the belt, you know, mm-hmm. from her waist and shit. And I'm like, what's the point of the buttons on the belt if it's just Velcro? <laughs> Make it look flashy. I exactly. Guess. Make it look flashy. Make it look yeah. good for the camera. <laughs> and EO came out to her own music, her her old music, which was nice. Yes. Yeah, I, thought, I was like, wait a minute. I know that music. Yeah. And EO did the splits during her entrance. I was like, yeah, mm. did it. You know? Um, and you wow. See the meme of EO doing the splits and then the frame below is Cody kissing the mat. <laughs> no. Oh, yeah. Um, and wow. Fans turned on Bianca fucking quick, didn't they? They did. Like Bianca came out, they're like, yeah, fucking Bianca. EO came Ooh. out, yeah, fucking EO. She fucking pushed EO down to the mat. They're like, fuck her. Ooh, they, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Real quick. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, nice stomp into the arm by Sky. I like that top rope. She went to the top and stomped her arm. I thought that was good. Uh, nice handstand into the knees, uh, into the arm there. Uh, good job. Uh, Oh, good job dropping EO on her face there, by the way, Be- Beller. Um, she did that one-handed power slam and just dropped her right on her fucking face. Bianca. Oh, God, stop. <laughs> uh, great springboard dropkick by Sky. Fantastic moonsault to the outside by Sky. Um, great sit-out powerbomb by Belair from the top rope. I thought that was great. Uh, Bailey's pants. Wear those more often, please. Mm. Um Overall, this was this was like the fucking EO Sky show, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, if if there was ever any doubters out there, like I don't really know about EO Sky. This should be this should have been the match. I was just like, oh, I get it. Um, I, I even though fucking Bianca dropped her on her fucking face. Um, again, I've always been one of Bianca's biggest critics. Um, she played her part here. You got this was basically the Bianca fucking greatest hits color by numbers whatever you want to call it uh i enjoyed it it was a good opener uh the, the crowd really made it you know 
Mm. Crowd made you believe, and the crowd's gonna make you believe some other shit. I'm gonna talk about that later. But four stars. Four stars for me too. This is great. What did you I, think, Shelby? <laughs> I didn't write a single note for this match. Oh and, damn it, Shelby! And funny sucked. enough, I fucking were, for whatever reason wrote it down as EO Sky versus Bailey. I don't know why the fuck I wrote that down. Um, That's a good sign. Yeah, uh, it just it didn't get me, and it's just. I feel like I've seen this match a hundred times. Maybe that's why. I don't know. Because every match just looks the same. It's all modern style now. Um, well, that's, but was, that's because Bianca just does the same hits over and over. She does a springboard um, splash and or springboard into a moonsault, which I think is pretty cool. Uh, hmm. She does the KOD. She does the, you know, she does the same shit. It's just, I don't know. It just didn't do it for me. There wasn't a lot of working in it, I guess. I don't know. I had a hard time paying attention to it. Um, but from what I did see, it was all right. I gave it a, from what it sounds like, you stopped paying attention once they came out. Cause you're like, Bailey, <laughs> I gave it a three out of five though. I was fair to it. Oh, this is where we're going to have some differing opinions here. <laughs> um, <laughs> next up, Seth Rollins taking y'all on Omar. I'm shocked with what I say about this one. I, th- I think y'all are going to be shocked with me too, but I, I have some more stuff to say. Um, Nice kick from Omos on the sneak attack. I like that. Great sell from uh, Seth on that shoulder block he did. He did the inside out, kind of like Rikishi does with the clothesline and shit, but just with a shoulder block. Nice choke slam on the apron by Omos. And then I just wrote in big capital fucking letters, stop fucking singing. Look, it's cute at the beginning of the match. It's cute when he comes out. And maybe at the beginning of the match when it first starts. But, like, when you're halfway through the match. Oh, 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 I did that on purpose, by the way. Okay. Um, but, like, when you're halfway through the match, like, fucking, come on, dude. Like, yeah. Shut the fuck up. I yeah. get that they're a hot, hot crowd and everything, too, but come on, man. Yeah. Um, I loved how Omos blocked the stop. I, I thought mm. that was great where he just like, he went for the stomp and his arms are down. Fucking love that. Um, da, 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 da. This, uh, you know, when I think there was like a kick out somewhere and I wrote down, this is the match. I think Omos and Lesnar should have had at WrestleMania. Mm. Um, I, I love the finish. I love the top rope stomp. I really enjoyed this. Uh, before I give you my grade, though, I will say Omos does need a win. He can't keep taking... I mean, yeah, you can put him over local talent on Raw a lot of time. You can put him on... Put him over on fucking Shelton Benjamin, Cedric Alexander, Elias on Raw all you want. But when it comes to, like, WrestleMania and Backlash and he keeps losing the fucking Lesnar and He started Rollins, to look like a goof. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. You know, you're like, he's got to get a win somewhere. I, th- I think... Personally, I think Rollins could have took this loss. Maybe some chicanery from yeah. NBC, something like that. I don't like know, that. though, because he's lost. Well, I guess he beat uh, uh, Logan. Logan Paul at WrestleMania. But it felt like up until that point, he was losing every fucking match he was in. You know? You know but I, th- I think I think Rollins could have took Hell, I think Lesnar could have took the loss at Mania. But yeah. I think if whatever producer would have went to Lesnar and said, okay, so you're going to be jobbing Omos tonight, I'm pretty sure he would have ate him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Hey, man. But. Yeah, uh, but I, I I really enjoyed this. I enjoyed this like ten times better than I thought. So three and three quarter stars. Four stars for me for the same reasons. I fucking really enjoyed this. Yeah, I mean, uh, Rollins made an interesting match. It was a lot better than I thought it was going to be. Uh, not bad. I gave it a three out of five. Oh well. Yeah. That's that's my only problem with it is that he he needs the you, you can put him over. All the jobbers on Raw you want, all the local talent on Raw you want, but he can't keep losing these matches on big pay-per-views. Not if you want to make him mean anything. And obviously exactly. you do, because he's still around and gets pay-per-view his matches. his music is badass. I uh, fucking love his music. <laughs> uh, coming up next is the three-way dance, or, yeah, three-way dance, fuck it. Basically. Uh, for the United States Championship, Bobby Lashley, Oof. Ross and Reed, Austin Theory. And, you know, I have a big question here. For the Women's Championship match, EO Sky came out. Bianca Belair came out. And then the fucking, when they got in the ring, the fucking lights dimmed. 
fucking Samantha Irving got on the mic and was just like introducing the challenger from Japan, EO Sky, and the, the champion from Knoxville, Tennessee, Bianca Belair. Fucking, I come for a three way match. I don't do that. Because this one didn't mean anything. It's for the U.S. Well, title. It did, what? Why is Austin Theory even in there other than it being for the U.S. title? It Two feels guys like this are is a feud on between... SmackDown and one is on Raw. It feels like this is a feud between Lashley and Bronson Reed that they were just like, well, we'll put the U.S. title on the line. But I'm just saying, like, why? If, if it's for title matches, why not have the lights dim? Introducing the challenger from fucking wherever. Goddamn I think timing too. From. I think timing does play a little factor into it as well. But they did it. But they did it for Rhea in Vega. One on one. It's a little less time, I suppose. No. All right. Um, did a, did a great spine buster by Bobby on the theory. He lifted him to the fucking ceiling. Um, Bobby, everybody look at Bobby. Do we love Bobby? How much do we love Bobby? Do we love Bobby? Uh, <laughs> I did like the Vader bomb to the floor by Bronson Reed, but overall, I don't know. I'm like Shelby on the first match. I I, I wasn't really digging it. Um. I, you know what? Now thinking about it, yeah, you're right. There was really no point in theory being in this match other than the United States title being on the line. No. Yeah, two and a half stars. Two and a half for me as well. I get just theory. This was uh, only because the U.S. title is on the line. He didn't need to be here. Um, you you knew that probably he was keeping the title anyway because he's on SmackDown yeah. as well as Lashley. So if anything. Lashley was going to win. You you couldn't buy into Bronson Reed winning. I just it just no like eh. this this wasn't the place. And to it was too short. Belt off him anyway. And um, it was too short. Yeah, it was kind of short. I could go on about my problems with triple threat matches. I'm not going to. Um, but yeah, it just really I, it didn't feel like it needed to be there. I gave it a two. Uh, next up is Rhea Ripley defending the SmackDown Raw Women's Championship against Zelina Vega, the hometown girl. And I will say, I was never really in to like, you know, like looks wise of Zelina Vega. But this hmm. night, she was looking fucking fine. That's what I'm saying. You know, she was uh, that's Malachi the only note Black is a lucky man. That's the only note I wrote, wrote down was Vega looking good tonight. But. I will say this about the match, and that is, if this match took place anywhere fucking else but Puerto Rico, anywhere fucking else, I mean, you could have had this match in fucking Los Angeles, California, Boise fucking Idaho, El Paso, Texas, El Paso, Texas, Anchorage, Alaska, you could have had this match fucking anywhere, and it wouldn't have been that great of a match. No. But... Because they did it in San Juan, Puerto Rico, and Zelina Vega was the hometown girl, th- that crowd made you believe in Vega. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, and th- that's what I kind of enjoyed about it. Again, it was a subpar match. Watch the match on mute. For anybody who listening to this, you know, all four of you, um, watch, go back and watch that match on mute. And it, I'll be honest, it's, it's, it's an okay, it's passable. It's what I would call a SmackDown or a Raw match, you know? But with with that crowd pumping it up, you you, would, you think Vega actually has a chance? Yeah, and it was a for, it was a foregone conclusion that Rio's winning. Yeah, yeah, it'd be nice if Vega yet. won. I, I mean, me personally, I would have fucking saw the sentimental value in it if I were booking it personally. Yeah. I would have gave her the title and had Rio win it back on Friday. Yeah, but that's just me, you know. But just for the crowd involvement, I probably would have rated this lower. Than what I got it, but just for the crowd pumping it up and shit like that, three and a quarter star. I only give it two and a half because of the crowd, mainly. I thought uh, Zelina kind of looked like a mini Sasha Banks on her entrance. I don't know what it was, but I, that was one of the things I, I was noted kind of thinking that. Was <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't. It just the way she was dressed or something. I don't know. Um, yeah, they were into her, so she got her moment. Uh, I yeah. disagree. I don't think that they should have even thought about putting the belt on her. Um, but I think that moment in the in the in 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 Puerto Rico for her was was very important. And yeah. just the way that they did it, where Rhea, Rhea leaves after the end of the match, and Selena gets the 
fucking crowd applause applause afterwards was a yeah. nice touch to it. Um, yeah. But yeah, it wasn't bad. It, it didn't overstay its welcome. Three out of five. And there was a spot at the beginning where, like, I think Zelina, like, um, was like, I think she pulled off, like, uh, an arm drag or something. I can't remember what it was. But then um, right away, I think Rhea hits her with, like, a power bomb and then goes for the cover. And I was just like, how pissed would that a crowd have been if that was the finish? <laughs> like, that crowd would have fucking lost it. Yeah. You know? um, would you give it, Shelby? I forgot. Three out of five. Three out of five. Yeah, but yeah, just just because of how hot that crowd is, that's the only reason yeah. I thought of that. I would have been like, "Fuck it, just give her the title and just have her lose it on Friday." Fuck it, you know. Yeah, wouldn't hurt. It wouldn't hurt Rhea, you know, winning it back on Friday. Just have her destroy Vega on Friday, and then fucking. It would depend you know. how they do it. I mean, I think a quick roll up would be a great way to do that. If yeah, a quick roll up, and Vega, Rhea's like, "What the fuck?" She has this big moment in Puerto Rico. Then Friday, they have the rematch. Rhea destroys her. Boom, you're off and running again. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but speaking of Puerto Rico, coming up next, Bad Bunny taking on Damian Priest in a San Juan street fight. Um, right off the bat, I'm bothered because Bad Bunny comes out with a chain wrapped around his neck. New Jack. No, that's not what I'm bothered with. He walk. He starts walking to the ring, but then he's like, oh, look at this. And he, he has the cart full of shit, which, okay, mm-hmm. cool. Pushes the cart down, takes off the chain, puts it in the cart, then gets in the ring with Priest. And I'm like, why? Yeah. <laughs> why not start with the chain, idiot? You know? Um, <laughs> I wrote down a Doyle rules because, uh, uh, you know, in, at Billy Madison, where it's a, do- yeah. a Doyle yeah. rule. Like, fucking Damien Priest shoved him down, and then he just raised his arms in the air. <laughs> it was just that's just what made me think of like a Doyle rules. Doyle rules. <laughs> yeah, it just fucking cracked me up. Um, and then Priest's look after Bad Bunny hit him with the Michinoku driver, like that fucking look, like motherfucker, did you just do that? You know, I thought that was a good look. Uh, good tornado DDT by uh, Bunny, and uh, Bunny Bunny's got fucking selling down. Yeah, you know, I gotta give him that. Uh, did like the table spot. Um. Good psych out by Priest. Uh, you would have thought fucking Carlito and Savio Vega coming out was The Rock and Austin returning. Yeah. Yeah. You know? That was insane. Like, Carlito came out, and they went fucking bonkers. And then Savio Vega came out to the Los Bariquas music on top of that, which yeah. that's a very underrated theme song. Mm. I fucking love the Los Bariquas theme song. But, like, yeah, man, the fucking they popped huge, you know? Um, overall, you know, Bad Bunny never fails to impress me. Uh, I think he did fairly well in this first one-on-one matchup because his previous two were a tag team and a Royal Rumble appearance. Yeah. Um, I enjoyed it. Four and a quarter star. Four stars for me. Um, actually, wait a minute. No, actually, no. I stand corrected. Four and a half stars for me. I, this was just uh, it had no business being this good but that's where we're at i think it had business well okay <laughs> fair enough <clears throat> um what did you think fuck face <laughs> yeah this this match isn't for me um i do think that not. if they were going to have this match it should have ended near the, around the table spot um, when You're Priest kind of a him. lost cause, Shelby. <laughs> wow. But then if it would have ended at the fucking table spot, we wouldn't have got Carlito and Vega. But they didn't really spit need in to... the Why face of people of... who don't want to be cool. Why were they part of that match? They didn't because really need Puerto to be Rico, part of that baby. match. So they, they could have had them somewhere else. They could have it's had them uncensored, come out baby. It's uncensored, Car- baby. Carlito could have had a Caribbean, whatever the fuck, the, the Carlito's cabana. Uh, he could have had like that segment or something. I don't know. I, I felt like it just it took away from the match because it's like, where the fuck are Bad Bunny and Priest? It should yeah, have ended. Dope. I think it should have ended with fucking Priest carrying Bad Bunny to the ring and then fucking Bad Bunny getting a quick roll up and a quick victory over Priest. That would have made far more fun. sense. I thought it was uh, fun. Fucking great match. Well, you got to understand, though, Shelby. Bad Bunny is not a professional wrestler. so Exactly. That fucking, but that time when Vega... 
LWO, Judgment Day all came out, that was giving Bunny time to catch his breath. But that gave Damian Priest time to catch his breath, too. No, and Damian Priest is a wrestler. But they're in a street uh, fight, though. Uh, it's a lame excuse. I gave it a two out of five. Okay. Coming up next, the Bloodline taking on Kevin Owens, Riddle, and Zane. And oh boy. Um, you know, yeah. Sami Zayn does the blue thunder bomb. Mm-hmm. And whenever he does it, he always has this this sense of urgency when he does it. Like he yep. hits the blue thunder bomb and he puts his arm down and he's like, Come on, come on, count, count. When the fuck has he ever won a match with that? I don't I'm think ever. Sure. <laughs> yeah, that bothers the fuck out of me. Right. You know, and it just I noticed that in this match. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, <laughs> overall, though, this was uh this is a SmackDown match. You could have put yeah. this on SmackDown and been yeah. the same fucking thing. Not even the crowd, I think, was hot. Oh, excuse me. You know, um, just for the talent involved, I would have gave it two and a half. Uh, but I, you know, I I upped it just a smidge, two and three quarter. I gave it three simply because of the interaction with Solo and Jey Uso. And Solo is about to spike him, and he's like, I'm your brother, not him. He's not your brother. I'm your brother. Like, that was that was what made this whole thing for me, other than it was like, this could have just been done on Raw or SmackDown. Like, why are we doing this? <clears throat> yeah. Um, oh, I was about to, yeah. say, about to say match of the night, didn't he? <laughs> no. Um, uh, I really don't see why the bloodline storyline is still really going on. I understand there's got to be a breakup, but the fact that Sami Zayn is still interacting with them really feels like it should have just ended at WrestleMania and it didn't need to go any further than that. Maybe the night after they get their tag team rematch and then it kind of plays out without Sami Zayn being involved anymore. It's just, everything's fallen flat since then. And it just doesn't really compute with me at all um i give this a two out of five and in the main event cody rhodes taking on brock lesnar um and you know what only cody rhodes brock lesnar and bad bunny are the only people on the show that got pyro wow yeah i was um, surprised no bunny i'm not surprised on cody and brock a little bit I figured Zelina, Damien, and Bunny would have got Pyro. Maybe. You know? um, good catch by Lesnar into the German. Like, Cody went for that cutter or kick, and he caught him just into a German. I thought that was really good. Um, somewhere, somewhere after Brock started bleeding, I'm pretty sure, even though they, they had some heat together, you know, uh, I'm pretty sure... John Moxley just had a tear of happiness somewhere. <laughs> or a blood drip of happiness. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> he started crying. Moxley blood. watched that. He's like, oh my God, he's trying to bleed more than me. Oh, I'll show him and just cut himself open. <laughs> Renee's like, what Renee's are you doing? Yeah, you Renee's know what just sitting means. on the couch next to him. What the fuck? <laughs> he's not going to have all the me. He's all over the baby. <laughs> You're bleeding all over the baby. <laughs> I kind of want to make that the quote now. <laughs> <laughs> You're bleeding all over the baby. <laughs> oh, my God. What are you doing? I'm, he's yeah. not going to out-bleed me. <laughs> um, and then, like, he was bleeding like a stuck pig. And then, like, I'm like, what? And then, finally, I was waiting a while. I was watching the ref. And I was like, Okay, and I finally wrote it down. I was like, why isn't the ref putting on gloves? And the second I wrote it down, he put them on. I was like, never mind. Um, overall, you know, I I wasn't impressed. Mm. I don't know. Maybe maybe it's the Brock Lesnar <laughs> thing. I don't know. I'm I'm maybe I'm just over him. You know, uh, I'll give him credit. At least he actually did some working. Mm. It wasn't fucking. Suplex, 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 F5. But again, why the fuck is the F5 even the finisher anymore? I'm I'm pretty sure fucking John Moxley's baby could kick out of one <laughs> at this point. 
<laughs> like, why the fuck is it even a finisher at this point? I don't get it. Everybody's fucking kicked out of it. You can kick out of at least one. Yeah. You know, I don't fucking get it. You know, uh, it's modern know. matches though. Everybody kicks out of everybody's finisher until they hit Not like all six the of time. Them. Pretty much, especially on pay per views, almost every time. I don't know. I just, I don't know. I'm just over it. You know, I'm just over it. And this fucking weird detour we're taking with Cody Rhodes, I'm just like, huh? Yeah, it's. You know, like. Okay, he didn't win at WrestleMania. I'm like, okay, I, I can I can roll with this. It was a little weird, but I'm like, okay, I can roll with this. I can I can see which way we're going with this. Then we took this weird detour with fucking Lesnar. Now I'm just like, what? Mm-hmm. You know, like who was really clamoring for a fucking Cody Rhodes Brock Lesnar match? Other than I'm not Vince sure Vince. anybody was. Other than Vince, I only gave this three stars because I'm like, I'm not sold here. Uh, you're nicer to me. I gave you know what? I'm downgrading mine. I had it at two and three quarter. I'm going to two and a half. Hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> this just, it's just weird because this should have been for the undisputed universal championship. Cody should have been defending the belt here and he wasn't. And it just, it felt off and it didn't feel like it meant as much. It wasn't bad. It wasn't great. It felt aggressive and it felt like a fight at certain parts, but, and it was a little bit different than, like you said, a normal Brock Lesnar match, which was kind of cool. Yeah. Um, but w- without Cody defending the belt, I had this at a four. And I, after talking about it, shit, I downgraded it to a three. I feel like I should downgrade it more, but I'm going to leave it at a three. It just, it wasn't what it could have been without the belt on the line. Mm. All right. So that was Backlash. So on a scale of 1 to 10, what do we get? Backlash 2023. 7. I added a 6. I'm downgrading to a 5. You know, I just wrote down 6. You know what? Yeah, I'm going to stick with 6. Because I did like the women's title match at the beginning. And the crowd really made the show. You know, That's part of what it. they're going to keep doing, though. And I've, I've started to notice this. Because they did fucking... They did the UK... Did they not do Australia last year? Were they talking about it? Or are they going there soon or something, too? God, they haven't done Australia since fucking... God. Buddy Matthews, that like won, the, the, okay. Buddy Matthews won the Cruiserweight title, you know? But they keep doing these, and then they got the Saudi shows. This is the future of WWE. They're just going to go to different countries that haven't seen wrestling in a long time because they get a huge pop and they make a fuck ton of money. Doesn't necessarily mean the matches are going to be any good. The rivalries are going to be any good, or the talent's going to be any good. It's just they're going to put the hometown business people there. Is business, man. And it's yeah, they're just they're just going to keep keep making money because if you only see wrestling once a year, come to your fucking country. And I mean, they do have you know indies and stuff, but let's face it, you know there aren't as many, there aren't near as many fans at indie shows as there are at WWE shows. You know they're going to go crazy for anything they see. It doesn't matter what's put out there, fucking. Fucking Selena Vega could have came out and take a shit in the ring, and they probably would have fucking lost their minds. <laughs> like, Damn. it doesn't matter. Well, there are some weirdos out there who like that. So. There are, there are. But this is the future, and it's just, ah, oh, it's, it's. I think that's why this pay per view felt so flat for me, because I was just kind of depressed thinking about that. It's just, uh, I don't know. I'm not yeah. looking forward to the next year in WWE. That's fair. Yeah. Uh-huh. So that was our review of Backlash 2023. Uh, so now we're going to move on to uh, Nick's other segment here, which is his fact of the week, which he usually regales us in a nice old factoid or story here. So, Nick, what's your fact of the week? So none other than Kevin Kelly pitched the initial storyline idea for Triple H and Stephanie McMahon to be an on-screen couple. Hmm. Kevin oh, Kelly, so it's, everybody. So it's Kevin Kelly's fault that Triple H cheated on China with Stephanie McMahon. Right on. Mm. <laughs> now we know who to blame. <laughs> and now we move on to Shelby's uh, segment here, which he regales us with some uh, 
this week in, I guess, this week in wrestling history, I guess is what we'll call it now. Uh, so, Shelby, what are your uh, this week in wrestling histories? Well, I only have one this week, and it's actually for the day this podcast comes out. God damn once. it. Yeah. I think I told you that earlier, didn't I? Yeah, but I thought you had your other ones, too. No, no, I only have this one. Just this one this week. Um, May 12th, 2004, TNA Wrestling announces the production of a new TV show to start in June, thus ending their weekly pay-per-view uh, events uh, that they used to put on. And I am guess I guess that was Impact, uh, TNA yeah. Impact that they were announcing, which is kind of interesting. Oh, wow. Yeah. I wonder, was that, yeah, that had to be the the one hour format on Fort's, uh, Fox yeah. Sports Network. Yeah. 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 So, and it's almost, well, fuck, it's almost been 20 years now. It'll be 20 years next year. Oh my God. They outlasted ECW and Nitro. <laughs> That's fucking depressing. And they've been, oh, hold on. So, like, hold on. They went, they were on Fox Sports Network. Mm-hmm. They were on Spike. Yes. Destination, Destination America. America. Access. Pop TV. Oh, yeah. I forgot about Pop TV. Shit. Yeah. Oh, five different fucking networks. Yeah. Are they, what are, are they on Pop still? Like, what do they play on now? No, they're on, they're on Access. Oh, they're on yeah, Access. It's now. Access okay. now, yeah. yeah. Again, the, none of us watch fucking TNA, so. <laughs> I hear something interesting happen. I'll check it out. Yeah. Usually you YouTube, check it out on YouTube or something, though, right? Yeah. Yeah, you don't yeah, actually I don't, have, I don't have cable. I can't even watch Raw and SmackDown and shit. Yeah. To watch the clips and everything. Yeah, that's all that's worth it, really. Yeah. Yeah. All right, now we're gonna move on to a, a game that we like to play here called back and forth, which is um, a game we like to play. We give, um, we throw out a topic, and then the other two players, um, you know, keep naming things on that topic until all of them have been named, or somebody gets it wrong. So, for instance. You know, somebody will say 24-7 champions, and then we keep going back until we name them all, which will be highly unlikely with 24-7 champions. Uh, um, or until somebody gets them wrong, obviously. Um, mine are fairly easy because I I was like, oh, shit, I need back and forth. And I was, like, I was looking at a page on Wikipedia. I was like, hey, this will work. So uh, I guess my first one will be current members of the Raw roster. Oh God, I'm gonna fail at this one. <laughs> <laughs> Not Cody with that Rhodes. attitude. <laughs> Correct, Cody Rhodes. Seth Rollins. Yes. Okay, thank God. Finn Balor. Yes. Rhea Rhea Ripley. Yes. Damian Priest. Yes. Dominic Mysterio. Yes. Must say, yes. Uh, Gunther. Yes. Maswa. Yes. Uh, Fabian Eichner. I'll accept it. Yeah, I can't remember his name. <laughs> Maxine Dupree. Yes. Uh, I can't remember the other one's name. Um, Montez Ford. Point. Yes. Yeah. Montez Ford. Fail eventually. <laughs> yeah. Montez Ford is part of SmackDown. Nah. All right. So I'll go next. First category. TNA slash Impact pay per view names. Oh fuck. Final Unbra- resolution. Yes. Unbreakable. Yes. Victory Road. Yep. Lockdown. Uh, yep. Genesis. Yep. Bound for Glory. Yep. Hardcore Justice. Yep. Slash Hard oh. Justice, I guess. Oh man, yes. Damn it. that counts. That's the same thing. I was gonna say Hard Justice. Man. <laughs> um, you said TNA pay per views, right? Yes. TNA Weekly Pay Per View Number One. Okay, that doesn't count. <laughs> I should have said that. Count? Those ones don't count. <laughs> Bullshit. We can uh, just count to like I don't even know how many they had. I want to say sixty-eight. Uh, makes Maybe sense. higher, I think. Come yeah. On. Um. Oh, 
Um, turning point. Yep. Slammiversary? Yep. Oh, fuck. I forgot about that. <laughs> uh, Destination X. Yep. Fuck. Seven left. There's seven left. Yeah. Rebellion? Yep. Oh. Oh, God. I don't know if this is one of the, like, special shows on TV or pay-per-view, but I'm going to go for it. Hard to kill? Yep. Yes. One night only? Nope. Ah. Points. So Woo. you missed fucking against all odds, no oh. surrender, sacrifice, redemption, and homecoming. Oh, um. fuck. <laughs> All right. Keeping the TNA theme. TNA. We are going to go with TNA television champions. Samoa Joe. Yes. Devon. Uh, I believe so. Yes. Booker T. Yes. Recount the whole lineage of that title. Um, from 2008 to 2016. So yes. So when it was the King of the Mountain title and shit. Yeah, and the Legends or right. whatever the fuck. Um, AJ Styles. Yep. Hmm. Kevin Nash. Yes. Um, fuck. Eric Young? Yep. McFoley. Yep. Um, God damn it. Who? <sighs> Television shit. Abyss? Yes. Oh, fuck. Um, oh, shit. T -t 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 Today, Junior. Jeff Jarrett. Yep. Fuck, that was my next one. God damn it. <laughs> um... Oh my god. Uh uh Oh man. Shit. He said some Joe. Um Robbie E? Yes. Oh my god. <laughs> Gunner. <laughs> uh yep. Oh fuck. I got nothing. <laughs> um <laughs> Jesse Goddard's? Who? Jesse Goddard's? No. Fuck. I had nothing. <laughs> yeah. Um. Actually, yes. Eli Drake. Uh. Robbie Ter Rob Terry. I don't know. See, I was thinking him, but I didn't think. Yeah. He yeah. Uh. Bobby Roode. Um. Bram. Douglas Williams. Bram. Wasn't uh, that Murphy? No. Gunnar Murphy. Oh, okay. Uh, James Storm, Lashley, and PJ Black. PJ Black, that's who I was thinking of for that guy. Uh, is Tom Latimer. Oh, wow, I didn't know that. I didn't huh. know that until now. I just looked it up. But yeah, Bram is Tom Latimer. Huh, that's interesting. All right, and my last one here, current members of the SmackDown roster. Fuck off. You can tell how hard I work. Roman Reigns. Ooh, oh. What? <laughs> no, yeah. I was like, <laughs> even I'm pretty sure he's part of the SmackDown. Damn it, Ernest, um, suck. <laughs> Montez Ford. Ooh, no, he's actually part of the Raw roster. Yeah, fuck off. <laughs> yeah. Solo Sokoa. 
Yeah. Angelo Dawkins. Yes. Jimmy Uso. Yes. Jay Uso. Yes. Rey Mysterio. Oh, okay, there he is. I was like, wait, he's not listed, but yeah, there he is. <laughs> Austin Theory. Yes. Santos Escobar. Yes. Bobby Lashley. Yes. Cruz del Toro. Yes. God damn it. No, sorry. <laughs> uh, Zelina Vega? Yep. Joaquin Wild. Yep. Bianca Belair. Yep. Carrie Ann Cross. Unfortunately. Um. Uh. Oh. Oh, that's not good. <laughs> I'm just like blanking now because I'm panicking. Fuck it. Bailey. Yeah. Oh. Scarlet. Yep. Yo, Sky. Yep. Dakota Kai. Yep. You prick. Why gotta do that to him for? <laughs> <laughs> you know exactly why. That's yeah. exactly why. Seamus. Yep. Butch. Yep. Uh, the other one. I need a name. <laughs> yeah, I know. I just can't remember his fucking name. Rich Holland. <laughs> there you go. There we go. Um. Edge. Yes. Trish Stratus. Ooh, no. Damn. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I figured you'd get that one from me. Wait, is it my turn next? Yeah. Okay, so WrestleMania main eventers. These are those who competed in the last match of WrestleMania. And yes, that includes nights one and nights two of the past few years. Oh, boy. Paul Kogan. Yep. Andre the Giant. Yep. Mr. T. Yep. Uh, Paul Orndorff. Yep. Roddy Piper. Yep. King Kong Bundy. Yep. Ted DiBiase. Yep. Uh, Randy Savage. Yep. Sergeant Slaughter. Yep. Ric Flair. Ooh. Oh, no, that wasn't the main event. Shit. No point. Fuck. You Points go to artist. So you could have had Ultimate Warrior, Sid Justice, Yokozuna, Brad Hart, Bam Bam Bigelow, Lawrence Taylor, Shawn Michaels, Undertaker, Steve Austin, The Rock, Triple H, Big Show, Mick Foley, Chris Jericho, Kurt Angle, Brock Lesnar, Chris Benoit, Batista, John Cena, Edge, Randy Orton, The Miz, Daniel Bryan, Roman Reigns, Seth Rollins, Ronda Rousey, Charlotte Flair, Becky Lynch, AJ Styles, Drew McIntyre, Sasha Banks, Bianca Belair, Kevin Owens, Jimmy Uso, Jay Uso, Sami Zayn, or Cody Rhodes. Duh. Yeah. All right, my last one. <laughs> WCW pay-per-view events in 1997. What the fuck? Mm. It's uncensored, baby. <laughs> I mean, uncensored, yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, Starcade? Yep. Halloween Havoc. Yep. Uh, Bash at the Beach. Yes. Uh, Super Brawl. Yep. Um, easy. Wait. No, Super Brawl wasn't. What? No. What? 97. Nope. Bullshit. I'll look it up. How come it's not listed here? Oh, fuck. I missed it. Sorry. My bad. Yeah, Go on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Road oh, wild. Yeah. Road wild is correct. Slamboree. Yes. 
Great American Bash. Yep. Now it starts to get difficult. <clears throat> A little bit. Um, Ball Brawl. Yep. Roll of the War 3. Yep. I think there's one more. Uh, yeah, there's one more. Okay, I know they didn't do a spring stampede that year. Um, okay, hold on. Let me think this out. Starcade was in December. Halloween Havoc was October or November. No, it had to be October. Fall Brawl was September. Great American Bash is one of the, I believe is August. Bash at the Beach is July-ish. Super Brawl is February. Um, fuck, what is that last one? It's on me. Oh, my God. Um, Road Wild was there. That's like March, isn't it? Um, oh my god. Sold out! Sold out is correct. Bam! <laughs> there was a spring stampede. There was a spring, spring stampede, though, as well. I thought that one was already said. Yeah. Oh, okay, because I know they, did, they didn't do spring stampede for like four years or something like that. Yeah, I think they skipped it for a little while. Yeah, they didn't do it from uh, 94 was the last one before 97. Oh. So they didn't do it in 95 or 96. Got you. All right, so that was back and forth here. So now we're going to move on to our vintage pick of the week, which is usually a show, promo, match, pay-per-view something we think that you should seek out and watch so uh nick what's your vintage pick of the week any wrestling impression that will sasso has done i love the um when jericho brings him out as stone cold that's yeah. fucking great uh, did you see uh, him do jesse ventura yes oh my god don't tell me chris i live down in the baja and when the Japanese fishermen came in with the fish tacos, they fried all the stink out, and I added the creme fresh. I fucking love it. I don't know. I still think, believe it or not, that's the one fucking positive thing I can say about carrying cross. cross. Yeah, that's the one positive thing I can say about that guy is that when I heard him do it, I was like, "Fuck, is, is this like Jesse Ventura voiceover? <laughs> like, fuck, that is spot on." Yeah, right. Like, fuck, just let yeah. him be like fucking carrying the body cross. <laughs> be a fan, probably. You yes, know? exactly. Carrying the body cross. Because like this uh, carrying TikTok shit ain't working for you right now. Pal. Let me. Uh, Is this finisher going to be a body say, cross then? Let me just say that my favorite of all time was Jesse Ventura. And now it's carrying the body cross. I'm going to show you why I am the best of all time. Fucking no. Um, Vincent pick of the week. Uh, Raw November 15th, 2005. I think this is the only time this match has ever happened. I can't think of another one to, to in my head, but uh, Ray Mysterio over Shawn Michaels. It was uh, during the Eddie Guerrero tribute night. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't think they've ever wrestled since. I don't think so. Either. No. Yeah. They they were always on opposite brands, right? So, well, until I guess they weren't in like 2008, but Michaels was like getting near the end of his career at that point. And they were both babyface. They were both babyface for this, too, but. No, well. But so, yeah, they were both babyface. For, so. Yeah, they were both babyface. You have to wonder, you know, you, you say that you say about that, and you have to wonder what it would have been like if we could have got Eddie Guerrero versus Shawn Michaels at WrestleMania. Well, that's kind of why I thought it was pretty interesting being there. Like, holy Eddie fuck, Guerrero man. Night. Yeah. WrestleMania 22, if that had been the match, are you kidding me? Yeah. We'd still be talking about that to this day, I'm sure. More than likely. More than likely. It's too bad. Mm -hmm. And mine's a little out there, uh, but back in, 
I want to say 2006 or seven, something like that. MTV tried their hand at some wrestling. With, oh, I've heard of this. With wrestling, wrestling society, yes. Yes, but right. here's a caveat to it. If you, I'm pretty sure the episodes are on YouTube if they're still there. But if they are, you have to watch this shit on mute because the the ring announcer got awful. The commentator awful. The wrestling action are pretty good. Right. Mm. You know? So I would suggest Wrestling Society X, but on mute. So, wow. Yes, that is my vintage pick of the week. <laughs> How about that? One of the main events was tables, ladders, and cervezas. Cervezas, yeah. <laughs> Damn right. Tables, ladders, and beer. <laughs> baby. Fuck yeah. <laughs> Give me some Dusakis. I don't fucking tear that shit up. Yeah, one of them was like a piranha time bomb death match or some shit. You got the Sackies, you got Carlsberg, you got Corona, you got fucking hell yeah. Surveys is fucking delicious. It's not even like you're drinking beer half the time. You're just drinking beer after beer after beer, and then you've gone through 13, and you're like, holy fuck, I gotta go home. Fuck, I didn't realize this was 2007. I thought it was like 2003. Cerveza, baby. I love me some surveys. God damn it. And there's the <laughs> bell, so we know what that means. That signifies the end of the three-way dance wrestling podcast. I know time flies when you're having so much fun. Yeah, uh, right. Yeah. So next week, yeah. we will be uh, doing something. I don't know what yet. Um, I think next wow. week, yeah, next week is a buffer week, and then we got double or nothing. Well, so I'm here next week, but then the two weeks after that, I'm looking after my niece, so I won't be on the two weeks after that. So next I'm... week is the buffer week. We should do See No Evil next week, because May 19th. And I'm then... not available next week. Damn it, Shelby, you suck. <laughs> Why are you unavailable next week? What the hell? I'm going out to help my mom with some stuff. I'm going to be out there from Thursday to basically the whole weekend. That's so again... Fair. So you think your mom is more important than us? Yes. Okay, and I don't like how fast you said yes. I'm <laughs> off for two weeks after that, so, like, I mean, I don't know. Well, I guess, okay, so I guess next week we can take a break, and then me and Shelby can do double or nothing, I guess. And then you have to come up with something for the week after that, too. Yeah, unless we'll you're going to take a break that week. Yeah, we'll probably retro that one. Yeah. Fair enough. All right. All right. There we go. So break next week. No podcast next week. Man, we're just never going to get to that episode 100, are we? Yes, we will. Uh, Not with that attitude. We keep putting our episode 100 should have been next week. Not with that attitude. Yes, with this attitude. It should have been next week. (laughs) Hey, should happen, man. We'll get there. So no episode next week. And then me and Shelby. We'll be back with Double or Nothing. Then the week after that, we'll have some sort of retro pay per view review. Hey, hey, maybe the week after that, we'll rewatch Wow Unleashed and see no. how that. Yes, please. No. Yes, or Wrestlelicious. <laughs> yes. I'll totally fucking listen to that. Why don't shit. you guys do Wrestlelicious next week? Wrestlelicious. No, no, me and you. Oh, no, I got to hear your thoughts on Wrestlelicious. No. Or maybe, maybe the week after Double or Nothing, we can finally do The Last of Us. Oh, hey. Hmm. We'll think about that. All right. All right. So that's going to do it for us here at the Three Way Dance Wrestling Podcast headquarters or whatever. Um, yeah. <laughs> we have a headquarters now? Yeah. We have a headquarters. Yeah. Now. Yeah. So until, <coughs> excuse me. So we'll see you guys in two weeks. Well, at least me and Shelby will. Um, until next time, guys, be breezy. <laughs>